Today's thrift store challenge will be a little bit different as we will be thrifting for my office room makeover. I love all of the office inspiration, especially with back to school coming up through Pottery Barn, but who can afford it? So instead, we're gonna go to the thrift store and see what we can come up with for a whole lot less. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. As the new school year is approaching, I thought there would be no better time than to kind of revamp my office space. And a lot of the inspirations that I was choosing or pinning were more of these just like bright and airy spaces, which was definitely not the direction that our office took when we first bought this house. First things first, we have to paint the walls. And I know a lot of you guys like the blue. I've loved it for, you know, this has been this way for a few years now. I think I've just really grown tired of it though. Starting off by just taking everything off of the shelves and putting it into a basket. Some of the stuff I will place back on the shelves, but because we are changing the color, likely some of the decor will also have to change. With the shelves cleared off, it's just time now to take everything off of the walls, move everything to the center of the room, take off all of the little electrical plates just so you can get a nice clean finish, fill the holes, sand them down, you know the drill. So everything is prepped and ready to go. The paint that I'm using is Alabaster by Sherwin-Williams. I like to take aluminum foil and wrap it around the top of the paint can, wrap a couple rubber bands around it, and then tape that off as well. So that way your paint can stays nice and clean. I've found to get kind of the cleanest finish just working in small sections, starting off with a trim brush and then going over that with a roller. I did have to do two coats in order to completely cover the blue, but this one single thing just by painting the room in a nice white color completely made the space feel so much bigger and brighter, which was the direction I wanted to go in. With the room painted, now it's time to make some modifications to some of the existing furniture that was there. So this leather ottoman, for a few reasons, doesn't really work in the space anymore because it just, again, feels a little bit heavy, a little bit dark, but also it's been beat up by kids and dogs and things like that. And it also doesn't provide me with some specific storage that I need for like my tripod and other things. And whenever I was choosing pieces to add to my mood board, everything kind of kept coming back in a white linen fabric. And for the past several weeks, I've kept my eyes out at the thrift store and just wasn't having a ton of luck for exactly Exactly what I needed for the space until I found this storage ottoman on Facebook marketplace and it was the perfect dimensions I needed okay so we brought it in there's some pilling happening here it obviously needs to be cleaned but otherwise it is gonna provide me with again some really nice storage in here but it was super affordable because I shopped it secondhand Headed over to Hobby Lobby and found this really beautiful fabric that was just the perfect neutral that complemented the rug that was in there. Started off by just removing the hinges and any of the pieces that connected the top to the bottom of the ottoman. By separating them, it's going to provide me the cleanest finish when I go to reupholster. Starting off with the bottom, I just measured each side and then applied it to the fabric and then buzzed each of those corners through the sewing machine twice just to make sure they were really nice and sturdy and then just slid it around the existing fabric to cover it. Before stapling it down, I just needed to make sure all of the corners were lining up correctly, removed the legs from the bottom, and then it was time to work on the top. Even though it's not a dramatic difference in the color choice that I made for the fabric, it just makes it feel a little bit more polished and clean. And then for the top piece now, when I buzzed it through the sewing machine, I did basically the same thing that I did to the bottom, except this time I needed to, of course, add a top layer, kind of almost like a fitted sheet wrapped that top piece around and then of course just making sure that the corners not only line up with the top but also with the bottom of the ottoman. And I know sewing takes an extra step but it makes stapling a breeze because now the corners are kind of already done. I just have to attach the fabric now to the inside of the ottoman. With the top piece done then I just needed to reattach those two pieces together using those same brackets and hinges that were there to begin with. I'm still not crazy about the inside, how that looks. So eventually I will go in with a cheaper fabric and just reline the inside so you don't see any staples. 
So altogether, this ottoman costs under $50 and provides me with all the storage I need and is the perfect thing to kind of ground this space in front of the window. Moving along now into lighting, this was a previous thrift flip that I shared where we have this kind of faux aged brass dome pendant that is made to look like it's hardwired, but it's not. But as I was kind of changing other components in the room, that dome pendant just seemed too heavy for the space. And some of you might remember when I had found this dome pendant at the thrift store as well, I believe it was $20. I painted it black, I took some handles from an old handbag and attached them and just tried to kind of repurpose something in a different way. But now that I have a place for this woven pendant, I thought let's remove the handles and now this can be our new ceiling light fixture. But because this is all it came with, I had to get a little creative, we'll call it, and figure out a way to be able to hang it safely. So I grabbed some heavy duty fishing wire and I basically just kind of weaved it through the top in order for the clasp to be attached to the dome pendant. And then for the actual light, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I needed to figure out a way to hang these magnetic light bulbs that are rechargeable. So I ordered these off of Amazon that I basically just stuck in there and now the light can stay magnetically attached to the inside now of this dome pendant. So when the charge runs out, all I have to do is pull that magnetic piece down, charge up the light and pop it back into place. Moving along now for wall decor. Previously, I had had this kind of moody, large scale wall art in the space, and it just, again, didn't fit. And sometimes I think when we think about wall decor, we're so kind of focused on just it being wall art. But there are so many other things you can put on your wall that are to me a lot more interesting and can also add a little bit more practicality to a space. I really love these wall sconces from Pottery Barn, but one costs almost $40 and a set of six will cost $240. So I needed a lot of them because again, we're trying to fill up this wall here. How this is meant to be hung is there is a kind of piece that attaches to the wall and then you hook all of these candle holders on there. And for a small wall, that would make perfect sense. But again, we need to kind of spread these out as best as possible. So I went to Lowe's and I grabbed some O-ring hooks and that is what we are going to use to kind of disperse all of these candle holders. In order to make these taper candle holders, I decided to grab these pieces from Lowe's as well, and I just connected them using some super glue gel. To connect each one onto the wall, like I mentioned, I needed these rings here, and I just wanted to unify everything with some textured black spray paint to give a more iron-like look. I did two coats and then I sealed them with a matte clear sealer and then it was just time to hang them on the wall. I wanted each sconce to be staggered, but I wanted them to be symmetrical from the center point out. And because I'm short, rather than measure from the ceiling, I like to measure from the floor. Lost my pencil several times during this process, but I was able to kind of just, again, measure from the ground and then made that marking so that way the two on either side would be matching. Once we were able to get them all hung up, then it was time to add kind of the light component. I don't trust myself or my kids to be around this many candles that are actually on fire. So I like to go the battery operated rechargeable route. I will link these, these are my favorite. They give kind of like a flickering effect, which is really nice. And also they have a nice kind of warm colored light. Sometimes I feel they're so cool toned. So the wall sconces from the Goodwill were just $6. And then I had all these candles already ready because we hung them for Halloween last year. I did have to buy a pack of batteries, but under $20 to fill up this giant wall was a major savings, especially when you compare it to the insane Pottery Barn prices. Another thing I wanted to add to the space was some sort of a pin board that had a kind of linen-y fabric. The only one I found had these kind of fairy lights. And I think in a kind of tween room or a child's room, playroom, the fairy lights are fine, but I feel sometimes they come across a little juvenile, so I decided to remove them, as well as there was just one little spot that had some red paint, I think, so I just decided to take my magic eraser. 
This guy was just $3 from my local thrift shop, the Hartville Thrift Shop, and it is just a nice thing to put in any office because especially if you have kids, they're always bringing home art and papers and things like that, and it's just nice to be able to put it out on display, but in an aesthetic way. Another just kind of smaller thing that I wanted to do was um, some of you guys know about a year ago now, my dad passed away and I want, my dad was like the best guitar player and he every time would come and he would play the guitar. Like this is him playing the guitar for my son when he was really little in our old house. And everybody grieves differently, but I think for me seeing his face is hard, but I still want to be reminded of him. So what I found a solution to that is to hang up the guitar and then I just downloaded one of the songs he used to play for me and my sister growing up all the time. It's now a song that I sing for my kids. So if you're in a similar boat and you know you want that reminder but not necessarily a picture of them, this is one of I'm sure many options. The next kind of vignette I wanted to create was a little seating nook, not for the person sitting in the office chair. So you guys might remember this flip from a few weeks back. Um, I found this chair for free on Facebook Marketplace. I just took the legs off, took all of the fabric off, free upholstered it with a $2 curtain from my local thrift shop. And because we flipped the ottoman, I wanted something that kind of complemented that same um, fabric. So that is the chair that we're gonna be using. So a very typical just chair setup is you'll have a chair and then you also need some sort of a floor lamp. So I'm gonna use one that I thrifted previously. This guy was just $7, but I did not have a side table that I wanted to use. So I went to Target first actually just to see what was there. And I really just wasn't finding exactly what I was looking for. And one thing I want to share with you guys is sometimes this is just a basic side table, but it was only $5 and structurally it was still pretty good, but it just had a lot of nicks in it. So sometimes rather than go out to Target, let's say, and spend $100 on something that I'm not totally in love with, just buy something secondhand that's a placeholder until you can find what you really want, which is exactly what this is. This isn't like the table of my dreams, but it was just $5, I already had the pen. It serves the purpose, it matches the rest of the room, and then when I come across you know, the side table that I really want, I won't feel bad about removing this one because it was just five bucks. Okay, so when it comes to shelf styling, we're just gonna go through this really quickly. I only have like 30 minutes to style these shelves. So if you're styling just one shelf, you just wanna make sure that that shelf is balanced with this shelf and then continues on down. The easiest way I found to kind of knock that bottom shelf out is just give yourself some closed storage. So before I do anything, I am gonna clear off all of the shelves, but also, when I'm at the thrift store, I'm making sure that the pieces that I'm choosing fall in line with the materials and the color palette for this space. Another item, of course, you need for your shelves are books. And I always recommend shopping secondhand when you can because you can find great books of things you're very interested in for such a tight budget. Another thing when you're considering those books is kind of making sure that they also fall in line with the color palette that you're choosing. I have a very kind of like a calming, relaxed color palette here with pops of black. So if I throw in a bright orange or a bright red colored book, it's just not going to fit the space. And I might like that book, I might wanna read that bright orange covered book, but putting it in the space on display will I think hurt the overall design of the room. So let's just talk materials that we're gonna be using in the space. I wanted to definitely have a patinaed brass here. So, and be careful when you're choosing metals, especially if it's not just like a matte black metal because that's really easy to match, but brass can be kind of tricky. So as you can see here, this brass is more pink toned and the brass that I'm going for in this room is more green toned. There's a green undertone with this brass. I wanted linen, so that makes it really easy when we're talking about linen books. I also DIY'd those linen book boxes. I also wanted to incorporate kind of like a stoneware ceramic look. So that's this candle holder that we thrifted, this little match striker that we thrifted, 
this piece of pottery that we thrifted. So I wanna make sure that that is kind of also flowing throughout the space. So when it comes to baskets, I wouldn't put these kind of wire baskets right next to this big basket because it just is too heavy in the space. If anything, I'll probably put them here. I also wouldn't put this propagation vase situation right under these cloches because they're too similar in shape. I know like they're not oriented the same way, but it's too much of the same thing on top of each other. So if anything, I would put those over there, but because I'm styling two shelves, one of those is gonna have to move over to the other shelves because it's a lot of glass in one kind of place. You wanna make sure that you are not having multiples of the same thing. So an example, I have this clock as an option here. Also more recently found this clock. I'm not going to use both of them. It's nice to give yourself a little bit of options and seeing what kind of fits the scale better. So you don't want to have multiples of, like you don't want 20 taper candle holders. You know, check the box and get on to the next thing. So one thing I personally like to do when I'm taking everything off the shelf, I kind of, rather than sort it by category, I sort it by material or if it's like a specific color. So I'll put all of my brass pieces together. I'll put all of my glass pieces together. If it's a mixed material, then I'll kind of sort it within that category. But then that way it avoids kind of overlapping of similar items. Another thing you really wanna make sure too is that when you're placing your items, does the placement make sense for the space? So putting lighting way down here at the bottom isn't going to provide any beneficial light for the space. I would say that that light is gonna to have to go in either one of these two on either side, but it has to go on one of these two shelves. The other thing to consider too is if you already have a light here, we already have that light over there by the chair, we have our dome pendant, so it might be a nice idea to run that light on that side. By doing so, there is an outlet right behind there. I can kind of string this on the back so you won't see the cord and then it's kind of tucked away underneath. So that way your lighting is kind of dispersed throughout the space. And when all of the lights are on, there's not like any kind of very bright areas or very dark areas. So this was that piece that I found from um, the Goodwill and it was originally from an old Studio McGee line. And as you can see, these leaves, especially these ones, pull more blue than green. So it makes it tricky when you have something that's more green undertone. So you just wanna make sure your undertones are the same. If I'm adding greenery, that that greenery complements kind of the blue undertone. And I chose that specifically because there is a blue undertone in this rug. In addition to kind of mixing the materials on the shelf, you want to also make sure that you are mixing up the scale and the shape. So these tapers should go with something that's kind of like wide based because these tapers with also this little skinny clock, with also a bunch of books going this way, it's all too much the same height, the same shape. Even if it's a mix of materials, it's not going to look right because it's not balanced. So again, I wouldn't wanna put a bunch of, just like I wouldn't wanna put a bunch of big things on one shelf, I also don't want to put a bunch of little things on one shelf because all of those pieces seem disassociated from each other because they're all too small and all kind of like the same scale. And here is a final look at all of the pieces that we've thrifted and worked on all put together. With that being said, that really wraps it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know which part was your favorite which project you like the best, which find, and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye for now.